Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about Dr. Faustus, which was written by Christopher Marlowe. In this video, I am going to talk about the drama, about all the characters and I will take this video act by act as it was given by Marlowe so that we feel like we have read the drama. And I will also give you all the key quotes or the quotes which were um, given by the characters so that you feel like you have actually read the drama. So without any further delay, let's start with Dr. Faustus. So as you all must know that the full name of this play was The Tragical History of Dr. Faustus. It is a drama which is divided in five acts and this was published in 1604 by Christopher Marlowe. Dr. Faustus is a complex play which is filled with wide range of events, characters and significant dialogues. So I will talk about main characters which were in this play and then let's see if we have anything coming up here and there. But these are the main characters. All the questions which you will get will be based on these characters. So definitely if it is Dr. Faustus, we have Dr. Faustus. That is the first character. He's the protagonist and a brilliant scholar who seeks supernatural powers through a pact with the devil. So Dr. Faustus, he's, I will just elaborate this a little bit more. He's a very wise man, he's very intelligent, he has gained all the information about everything in this world and this is why he feels that he knows everything and now he needs to try something else, right? He is like, you know, just like uh, Ravan, I can say that he's, he's very intelligent, he's very wise but he has gotten overconfident or he has gotten pride, he feels that he knows everything so now he needs to know something which is out of his realm. So that's why he decided that, okay, now since I know everything about God and this world and science and everything, so now let me have a pact with the devil and know something more, which he is not supposed to know, right? He wants to know those things. Then on number two, we have Mephistopheles. He's a devil who serves Lucifer and he becomes a Faustus servant. So if I talk about Mephistopheles, he's not entirely a black character, you would say. Because even though he is with the devil, he serves Lucifer. If you think about it, like Lucifer, he is the demon god. He is the devil, uh, like the main head in charge of all the hell and everything. So uh, if you think about it, Mephist Mephistopheles should feel like he is the black character. He is the villain of the drama. But actually, no, he is not. He Even sometimes he tries to stop Dr. Faustus from doing the things which he is doing. He actually does that. He tells him indirectly. Uh, from time to time he reminds him that the ultimate power is the god and the devil is just somewhere on the opposition. So this is Mephistopheles. Then we have two characters which is Vals and Cornelius. These are two scholars. They help Dr. Faustus in getting into the dark arts. They introduce uh, the dark arts to Dr. Faustus. Then we have uh, the two good and evil angels. So definitely as the name goes, you can tell, you know how in the movies they show when anyone is trying to make a decision, especially in Tom and Jerry, like there's this white angel with uh, the circle on his head, like the aura, and then there's this red angel with uh, horns on his head. So this is like, this. it's pretty much the same thing. The good and the evil angels, they are the spirits representing Faustus's internal struggle between the good and the evil. And then definitely we have Lucifer, he's the ruler of hell. And we have the Pope. He doesn't have a very big role, but he's also there. Uh, the Pope is the head of the Catholic Church whom Foster plays tricks on. So we know about uh, the Pope, right? He's in the Vatican City. It's the same Pope we're talking about. And then finally, we have Emperor Charles V. He's the Holy Roman Emperor whose court Dr. Faustus visits. So when uh, Dr. Faustus, he gets like all the powers and everything. Uh, so this is like, uh, I'm kind of, uh, giving you everything in, in advance of what is going to happen in the play. But I, I, I can imagine that, <laughs> you know, you're going to know about it anyway. So Emperor Charles is the one in whose court Dr. Faustus goes later to show off his powers, you know, because now, because now that he has powers, he wants to show off that, oh yes, I am better than everyone or I have these powers. This is why he actually went into that area, right? So these are all the main characters. Uh, and also apart from this, we had an old guy whom Dr. Faustus tried to use his, on whom he tried to use his magic, but he couldn't use his magic on this uh, old man because he is a pious man. He is a good man. He is a man of God. And this is why the 
evil powers which Dr. Foster had, had gained did not work on this old man. So these are all the characters I've given you the layout of uh, all the characters and uh, what kind of what shade do they have so you can already see dr faustus he is a good person but in the end he is damned to hell because of his life choices mephistopheles is a gray character even though he serves the devil but he's not entirely uh, the evil or the black kind of uh, the black character in this drama then uh, vals and cornelius they are just helping dr faustus in getting into dark arts uh you can say they kind of have a dark shade but they are not given that many shades in this play or anything. They are just like a medium for Dr. Foster's to reach what he wanted to reach to, where he wanted to reach at. If it was not for these two, maybe he would get someone else to do what he wanted. Then definitely we have the good and the bad angels. So let's dive into the drama, exactly what happens that we have all these characters. I hope that you are getting to understand what I am talking about so far. And if you are enjoying this video, please like and leave me a comment. How are you finding it so far? Um, so let's start with Act 1. In Act 1, Doctor, we are introduced to Dr. Faustus. He's a brilliant scholar, He's but he's dissatisfied with the traditional academic knowledge and he decides to turn to black magic and necromancy to gain supernatural powers and knowledge beyond human limits. He summons two scholars, Vals and Cornelius, to teach him the dark arts and they introduce him to the idea of making a pact with the devil. So we already have the three characters here. Faustus then conjures Mephistopheles, a devil who serves the Lucifer and offers his soul in exchange for 24 years of service from Mephistopheles and access to unlimited power and knowledge. So already in the first act, we can see that he has made the pact with the devil. Foster signs a contract with his blood, sealing his fate with the devil. Now here is something like he has already signed the contract and then he is he has sealed his fate with the devil. But there are certain things which happened here in this uh, during this first act. That is when he tried to actually sign uh, that pact with his blood, his blood froze. So this is not supposed to happen with humans. Our bloods are not supposed to freeze, especially if, if you are alive, this is not supposed to happen. This was a sign from God. God was trying to tell him that no, do not sign this deed. But he did not take that as a sign. He actually went to a candle and then he made his blood uh, liquid again and then he signed that pact. So this is something which is uh, very important to know about Act 1. Uh, now I'll talk about the key quotes from Act 1. So Faustus, begin thy incantation and try if devil will obey the haste, seeing thou hast prayed in sacrifice to them. This is Foster saying, he's telling that yes, I will follow the devil, I will obey the devil and then I will sacrifice myself to him. This is what all happened in the first act. Now we'll move on to the second act. This is after the signing, uh, after the signing of the pact with Mephistopheles. Foster reveals in his newfound powers and begins to perform magical feats and astonish those around him. Now that he has all the power, right, what will he do with it? Like you would think that if you have all the powers in the world, maybe you will try to do something better with this. But then he just thought, okay, I have powers and he felt that 24 years are is it's a long time. So he just used these abilities to entertain people and gain fame and wealth. He uses his powers to conjure and trick the Duke and the Duchess of Van Holt and they, he's entertaining them. And then also there is one more important scene where Faustus travels to Pope's court in Rome. He disguises himself as a friar and he plays tricks on the Pope and his followers using chaos and confusion. So he makes the food disappear or he tries to grow horn on people's heads. So these are all like magical things which he did just for fun. Now this is not even to gain fame or anything. He just wants to show off his powers and he wants to make fun of people. So that's why he goes to Rome. This is also very important to note that like for two things. One, that, first, uh, that Christopher Marlowe actually was trying to also uh, lead this play, like give this a funny lead as well because till now everything was going on very serious. In Act 1, it's all very serious. Um, like Faustus was thinking about what should I learn next and then his deal with Mephistopheles and Lucifer, like it was all very serious. So in Act 2, uh, Christopher Marlowe is kind of trying to lighten up the play and that's why he's giving all these like funny things which is going on. So when we were talking about the Pope, so the Pope and his court are perplexed and frightened by the supernatural occurrences. But they are also kind of powerless against Faustus's magic, right? 
uh, uh, definitely Pope is someone who is very important and someone who holds a certain kind of power. But because Faustus took the shortcut route, he went to the devil and he got the power. So even the court and the Pope did not have those powers to fight with Dr. Faustus at that time. So Faustus was just taking pleasure in manipulating the people over there. And then we have another demonstration where Faustus visits the emperor's court and he uses his magic to conjure a parade of the seven deadly sins. So if you're a Christian, you have Christian friends, maybe you would know about the seven deadly sins. The seven deadly sins are envy, gluttony, greed, lust, pride, sloth and wrath. These are the seven deadly sins. So Faustus makes a whole show, a whole parade of these seven deadly sins in the court. Just for the fun of it. There's nothing else but just for the fun of it. However, as Faustus enjoys the fame and admiration, he also begins to experience the emptiness and limitation to his powers. Despite his magical abilities, he cannot escape the inevitable fate of his pact with the devil. So now what is the point here that yes, he has that power, he can do whatever he wants but then also he soon realizes that you know he's just having fun but this someday is going to come to an end. Also with during his uh, charts with Mephistopheles, he realizes that devil is not the head. Now because Mephistopheles follows Lucifer, he cannot exactly tell Dr. Faustus that yes, there is a god, there is a supreme power the good will always win over evil. He cannot say all those things because he is on the other side. But when Faustus asks Mephistopheles certain questions, he stays quiet because he cannot tell him the right answers. This is where Faustus starts to feel that, okay, maybe this is not everything. I have not gained unlimited power, but definitely these things also have certain limitations. So throughout this act too, Faustus' inner conflicts becomes more apparent. Initially, he was having fun in the beginning. But then we can co we come back to the actual agenda of the of this play. He is torn between his desire for worldly pleasures and his growing sense of guilt and impending damnation. The good and evil angels appear to him, representing his conscience, and with good angel urging him to repent and seek forgiveness while the evil angel tempts him to continue into indulging in his magical powers. Now we will move on to Act 3. I hope you are getting it so far. And you're enjoying the video. So in the act 3, what happens is the act 2 with all this fun that he was having, all the confusion, like it's it was a mixture of so many feelings that Faustus was having. We have already seen that. So in act 3, what happened is all the 24 years have passed, like it's about to end and Faustus has become torn between repentance and damnation again. So you can see the good angel telling him, don't do this, go back to God, God will help you, he is the mighty, he will forgive you, he forgives everyone, he saves everyone. He keeps saying like, the good angel will uh, keep telling these things to Dr. Faustus, while the devil's angel or the evil angel will keep telling him, no, there is no God, at least you have power now, enjoy this world and this and that. 24 years are about to end and then Dr. Faustus doesn't want to give his soul to the devil, he feels that he has this, you know, when you have that gut feeling from inside your instincts, they will be like, no, this is this is something wrong. It is not working out. So he feels that maybe if he if he will apologize to the God now, the God will accept him because he is the Almighty. He forgives everyone because the good angel tell, tells him to do this. He thought that okay, maybe I will do this, but then again, uh, the bad angel comes and then the and then Lucifer comes and Mephistopheles comes and then they are like, are you trying to ditch me now after 24 years? Like after all of this, are you planning to leave me? Are you planning to not follow through the sacrifice which you had promised before? So with his wicked ways, Lucifer again brings him back to his pact. Now Faustus is just filled with remorse and struggle and all his conflicting desires for redemption and power. With this act 3 finishes, now we will move on to act 4. Faustus indulges in hedonistic activities to distract himself from his impending doom. What he does, because see, he has already promised that he is going to give his soul uh, to the devil. So now he feels that, okay, I cannot do anything after these 24 years or I cannot do anything. It is out of my control. So what he does is, okay, I will just distract myself. I will do things which are amusing to me. Uh, you know, like when you have lots of stress at work or maybe you are stressed about the studies or education or anything, you have some sort of stress that you have to do something. So what you will do, you will scroll on Facebook, you will go on Instagram or you will just watch a movie to distract yourself to get away from the stress. 
same thing Faustus was doing. He was just trying to distract himself from the doom which was out of his control or so he felt. If he would have just apologized to God, asked for forgiveness and followed the correct path, his end would have been something else. But he just continued to use his powers for amusement and personal gain. Then he also plays a prank on a horse courser and a clown. And then he was just trying to show his magical abilities. What he did was he made a horse out of hay with his magical powers. And then he sold it to another person. And because the horse was so healthy and everything, this other person bought it. But when this horse actually went through water, it turned into, it returned to its actual form. And then this person tried to come back to Faustus and ask for money. And Faustus was, Faustus was like, what? I didn't do anything and this and that. So he was just, you know, making fun of things and the powers. He was just using it for fun. And then after this, he went to the banquet of Duke and Duchess of Panholt. And there he also gives them a vision of Alexander the Great. So Dr. Faustus does one more thing. He tries to conjure the Helen of Troy. Now, Helen of Troy is considered to be the most beautiful woman on earth ever existed. She is considered to be the prettiest. So what he wants is he wants the Helen of Troy, Troy to be his love. He wants to marry her. And that's why he asked Mephistopheles to bring her and then make her fall in love with him. But then Mephistopheles cannot control all these things because love and marriage and wedding, these are all very pious things. These are very pure. These things which are out of his control, he cannot do that. So what he does is he said, I can give you a vision of these things, but I cannot make them fall in love with you or I cannot get them married to you. I cannot do those things. Right? So this is when again it strikes to Dr. Faustus that maybe the powers which I have are not everything. Now, there's a key quote in this, uh, which is by Dr. Faustus again. It is, make me immortal with a kiss. He's asking the Helen of Troy to kiss him so that he can be immortal. He can feel that he's immortal. Immortal is someone who doesn't die. Okay. With this, we will proceed to the last act of this drama, which is Act 5. So now at this day, the 24 years are already finished. This is the final day of his pact and Faustus is consumed by fear and desperation. Right? He is so scared. He attempts to repent and seek God's mercy, but now it is too late. Mephistopheles and the other devils arrive to claim Faustus' soul and he is dragged down to hell in a dramatic and tragic ending. So now at this, while it is all about to end, Dr. Faustus, he feels extremely guilty and he, he just wanted all of this to go away, but he could not. So at this, during this time, he realizes that what has happened to him should not happen to anyone else. This is why when they are dragging him to the hell, this is the, uh, this is the time he requests that my one last wish is that all the books for black magic and all the knowledge which I have left out there, which is regarding to black magic and these things, it should all vanish. It should all destroy itself so that no one else had, has to go through what he went. And then he just goes to the hell and then his soul is damned forever and ever. This is all about Dr. Faustus. The key quote in this act is, Ah, Faustus now has thou but one bear art to live. And then thou must be damned perpetually. This was said by Mephistopheles. And now that he has only one hour to live and then after this one hour, he will be in damnation for eternity. And there is no coming back from there. Definitely. Eternity is that. So with this, I hope that you were able to understand what happened in Dr. Faustus. This is a classical tragedy that delves into the themes of ambition, knowledge, temptation and the consequences of making deals with the devil. And you have understood all the characters and everything. So if you did enjoy this video, please uh, let me know in the comment section and definitely do subscribe to the channel. 